Uh, hello, 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 everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I should be saying welcome to my SmackDown review. Um, well, Friday Night SmackDown review. You know, to be honest, I didn't know if this show was live or not. To be honest, I really didn't know. But um, you know, first off, number one, I hope everybody had a happy holiday out there. Um, in the past uh, few days, Christmas or whatever you celebrate or whatnot. I uh, just want to say that first. I know I didn't do an NXT review last Wednesday. Honestly, there wasn't really nothing to talk about on NXT, really. Look at me wrong, there was a couple good matches here and there, but I never planned on doing a review for Christmas in general, okay? I just I just wasn't. It was it was really nothing going on. It, it honestly wasn't. It, it was some good matches, don't get me wrong, and, you know, a couple things here and there, but... You know, it was a tape show, and I, it was, I didn't feel like there was really much to talk about on Wednesday. And like I said, it was Christmas. I, I never planned on doing a review to begin with. But, um, you know, other than a happy holiday and everything, uh, SmackDown, Detroit, Michigan. Honestly, and you know, I think I said this last week in my review or Raw last Monday. I could have sworn SmackDown was going to be taped again this week. But I'm like, well, Christmas is over, so I guess they don't really need to tape the show. We're already live again. But I swear to God, I thought they taped that show, um, you know, back-to-back last uh, Friday. But I guess I was wrong. I guess they probably just the only thing they really taped was SmackDown. And, they didn't tape, but the other thing they really did tape was just some of the stuff from NXT that was played on Wednesday. So... I really came into this thinking that SmackDown was actually taped, but um, I'm like, well, it's already two days after Christmas, so why, why would it be taped? I just thought everybody was taking a week off and everything. That's why we just saw so many tape shows, and it was it, it wasn't really a lot going on, I would say, this week. But um, there was a maybe one, two ner- noteworthy things from this show for uh, SmackDown. Uh, first off, I do want to say, though, uh, if you have not checked out already, please check out my year-end review. Uh, it is posted online right now. I did it about a week ago. I think I had it posted on, um, if it was either Monday or Sunday, but I, I did the review last week. Uh, like, me and my friend, uh, Kyle, we did a, basically a four-and-a-half-hour review of everything in wrestling, so please check that out. We talked about everything from Raw to SmackDown. That'll be in general, NXT, AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, NWA, MLW. We talked about all those things. We had a very good four and a half hour uh, conversation about it. Is it long? Yes, it is. But hey, we had a lot of things to say. It was a lot of news stories. A lot of things we're talking about throughout the entire year in uh, professional wrestling. But other than that, though, uh, moving on into SmackDown, as we were about to kick it off with the triple threat match uh, to see who would face well, I'm sorry, not a triple threat match. We kicked off with Elias opening the show. Elias Raymond starts singing a song about SmackDown, talking about stuff that's been bad through the year, like uh, Bailey's haircut or uh, Shane McMahon. I'm gonna go. Hey, make sure you check out that review. I talk a lot about Shane McMahon, okay? Especially the best in the world thing. But um, you know, he pretty much sang a song about what's gonna happen on the show tonight, like the triple threat match. So, Elias opened up SmackDown. Daniel Bryan came out then, especially for the triple threat match. Uh, and whatnot. Corbin came out. Of course, he's being carried by his uh, minions, I should say, or security guard guys. As he talked about Bryan and Miz, talked about their horrible fathers, and uh, who had a lot of WrestleMania. And that Corbin pretty much says that, you know, Bryan thinks he can beat The Fiend. You know, whatever type here, he may have took some of his brain matter out also. He said Corbin said that Brian is a nice guy who is no longer a championship material. And The Miz just likes to play action heroes in movies, but he's not really a hero. He is the hero, as he says, as he is going to beat The Fiend at the Royal Rumble as they carried him down. Roman Reigns' music hit. The, um... The guys that are carrying what they drive. It looked like, I don't know if that was a botch or that, but that fall, I would say it was brutal. Like, don't get me wrong, Corbin, he tucked and rolled and everything to the side. I think, I don't know if he was supposed to jump while they were carrying him, but it was like they lowered him on one side and he just rolled his way out of there. He pretty much told the security guys to go after Roman and everything. Roman came out of nowhere then, which I will say Roman was over in Detroit, so I, I will say that. Um... And whatnot. Roman pretty much kept hitting him with punches. Punched him all over the place. Threw him into the steel steps. Corbin tried to get away. Roman was going to go for the spear. But Corbin pretty much headed through the, 
the crowd then as, you know, agents and referees. I think one was Sanjay Dunt, I believe. Uh, they all, um, and Adam Pierce. they all pretty much, you know, calmed Roman down and everything as he was still going after Corbin. This isn't the first thing you're going to see. So, yeah, the triple threat match didn't happen there. Uh, Braun Strowman and the New Day went against Cesaro. Um, Nakamura and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, who has finally wrestled. Uh, I, I, has he wrestled? I don't even remember the last time Sami Zayn has wrestled on this show. It's been kind of months, really, because they've made him into a manager or whatnot. So, yeah, Sami Zayn actually wrestled on this show tonight, folks. Uh, we finally saw him. Not much to say from this tag match, though. Um, it was a six-man. It ended up with Strowman hitting the power slam. On Nakamura. One thing I did like, though, was Cesaro doing his uppercut knocking Kofi through the announce table. I will say that did look pretty good. But, uh, yeah, um, Strowman, he power slammed Nakamura for the win. He, he pretty much pinned the Intercontinental Champion, so I guess I'll get a title shot. But then after that, Kofi pretty much got on the microphone and said, Listen, Strowman, man, we, we know, listen, man, we know how great you are and everything. You tell everybody you can get these hands and everything, but uh, how about get these hips or whatnot? You got a set of hips on you. Next thing you know, pretty much Kofi and uh, Big E pretty much tried to get him like, okay, man, you want to do this? Come on, we want you to do this. But Strowman pretty much like pushed him to the side. He looked at the crowd. And then he started dancing. It looked like he tried to do the running man. And I don't know if that was a Carlton dance. Listen, I don't get what they do. With Sh Listen, Strowman to me, like I've said, like a lot of other people said, is damn near running joke at this point. Okay. What I say, has he become the big show? Maybe. But I'm sure people are not going to like his dancing. The match was okay, the six-man, but I don't think um, it's like this. I think people are sick of watching the monsters get turned into jokes then later in time because now it's like he's dancing and whatnot. Maybe somebody did get a laugh out of this, whoever was watching it, but I think a lot of people are probably going to shit on and saying like, oh, Strowman, man, I thought he's supposed to be this monster. Why is he out there dancing, trying to be the running man and... I, I don't know, man, but they look like the crowd liked the, him dancing out there. So maybe it did something. I don't know. Did I think it was really funny? A little. That's it. But I didn't think it was that funny. But then it was like, wait a minute. This guy is supposed to be going for the Intercontinental title, but the New Day's having him dance out there for some reason. I don't know. You can take that. How do you want to take that? But I'm sure a lot of people are not going to like that, though. Uh, Caleb Braxton was outside the trainer's room as Adam Pierce Freeman said that, uh, Corbin was not going to, you know, do this match tonight after the whole Reigns thing, thing so it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Mandy Rose was talking to Sonya Deville. Uh, pretty much said, we, yeah, we got to go out to the ring. Deville pretty much said, you weren't in my corner last week. Listen, I'll help you as soon as I, you know, finish signing these programs. But, um, because, uh, you know, Deville wanted where she was at, and Rose said, listen, I had sweat all over my dress last week. I couldn't get there. Otis showed up then with a uh, a cake his mom made. It was a homemade holiday fruit cake. And, you know, Rose pretty much, she accepted the cake, but, you know, uh, I, I think he was going to say something else. Um, and I guess, he, you know, he wanted to repay her, but she had to go do her match. So I will say that some people are interested in this story, the Otis and Mandy Rose thing. Like they've always kind of played it up, and now they're going kind of full force with it. You know, I'm sure this may end up with Rose turning on him, but let's see where this goes. I'm, I don't, I'm not, I don't hate it. I don't hate it all the way, but it, it is interesting, though, to see what happens. Carmella then went against Mandy Rhodes. Uh, Mandy Rhodes. Did I say Rhodes? What, what the fuck am I talking? I'm watching the wrong show. Mandy Rose. Um, yeah, Mandy Rose. Listen, there's not much to say about this match. She went longer than DeVille, I will say that. And notice DeVille never came out, too, so she never came out during the match. Carmella won, super kick. I'm sure Corey Graves could not hold his um contention, it looked like, as even on commentary, like he didn't know who to choose. But I'm sure he wanted both, but, you know, then again, this guy already has one of them to begin with. So uh, I'm sure he wanted both, though. But the match was whatever, you know, Carmella won with a super kick. But, yeah, Sonya Deville was not up there, out there. So maybe she's going to turn or one of them going to turn. One's going to be heel, one's going to be face. I don't know. Uh, they played another Sheamus video. Pretty much says he's going to break the door down to a whole new SmackDown since he's been gone for the past nine months. Daniel Bryan went against The Miz. It was going to be a one-on-one. -on -one, but it ended up with the security guys trying to attack both uh Daniel Bryan and the Miz, so we didn't really get a match as they went to the back as Corbin was surrounded by a security team. Uh, pretty much saw that was an unsafe work environment and whatnot. But then uh, Caleb Braxton pretty much says that Reigns was actually the building. Like Corbin, like, you know what? Maybe I will do that 
uh, triple threat match tonight now. Pretty much Ryan and Miz were watching from, you know, the screen, and they ran back and tried to get Corbin and chase him as, you know, they went through the security guys then. Uh, moment of piss. Oh, I'm sorry. Moment of bliss. Moment of shit. Moment of why is it still a, sh a talk show segment? Hey, they got nothing better for bliss to do. Same with Nikki Cross, though. Uh... You know, they're making her the best friend and everything. I'm sure people are going to like her pants. I can already, t I can tell you like five people that's going to send me a message to speak to me about that as soon as they see this show about Nikki Cross's pants. Watch. Just watch. I know someone's going to come ask me about it. Um, they had um, Lacey Evans out there to talk about Sasha Banks taunting her kid uh, last week. And Evans says you don't, uh, you know, attack a child, especially a child with a mother. A lot of people were making fun of that because they didn't understand didn't make sense about that joke, but pretty much says that her daughter means everything there, and she snapped when Sasha Banks was in her face, and that uh, you don't mess with her child, and that the mama bear mole comes out, and you know, um, pretty much Lacey Evans says, you know what, um, I know how these interviews work and whatnot, and she wants to take out uh, Sasha and Bailey. Pretty much says, listen, I know they're going to come out and attack them behind me, so we're, we're not going to finish this talk show. At least she's smart enough to know what happens on these talk shows. So she headed to the ring. She's also team with Dana Brooke, but Sasha and Bailey, uh, you know, drag her out there then. As Banks Freeman says, like, you might be a good mother, but you're a terrible tag team partner. Pretty much Lacey ran to the stage, which, you know, mysteriously, uh, Dana Brooke, Recovered and kind of held her own ground in as they fought to the ring. Uh, the tag match itself, um, it was okay. I will say that. Sasha um, hit the bank statement on Dana Brooke. But I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, though, that, wait a minute, why is it taking them this long if they've already beat up Dana Brooke halfway through the match and took them all to beat them? But then Lacey Evans was fresh out there. But I expected Dana Brooke to get the pin because it's Dana Brooke in general. But, uh, you know, Sasha and them got the bank statement. I'm sure people are not going to have, like, you know, Sasha running away from Lacey Evans. I can already see that coming, but I guess it has to do with the whole story and whatnot. Um, and whatnot, but, like I said, Sasha and them get, get the win. It was okay. I, I didn't think the match was that bad. So I guess it furthers the story of wherever this is going. Um, Mandy Rose was, uh, I guess, tasting the frosting to the cake uh, Otis gave. Until Dolph Ziggler showed up, pretty much asked him, "What are you doing for New Year's Eve, huh?" Because you know I'm I'm doing some things right now. Yeah, what? What? Let me say this real quick. Why? So let me say they're doing a match on the Steve Harvey thing. What? What? Like the celebration or whatnot? So they're gonna have Roman Reigns versus Dolph Ziggler in Times Square on New Year's Eve. Who's gonna watch that? I don't even know that, like, I'm not even gonna remember that's even a match. I'll probably be playing a video game or something. It's not, like, it's not like there's any other wrestling program on Tuesday right now. Impact's on Saturday, you know, best of show mode right now. So, why do I want to see a match with Roman Reigns and, uh, Ziggler for, okay? So, I, I don't, I don't even know why they even have a match for that. Like, oh, Roman Reigns just got an opponent for New Year's Eve. When I first read that, like, so we're having a match during some New Year's Eve thing. I don't really care. Honestly. Why is this a match? I have no idea. Or I don't know if anybody's really going to watch it. Uh, number two. I just. Um, I, I, don't, I don't care. Okay. I, I, I don't know man. Like honestly. I don't give a shit about New Year's in general. It's just another day to me. So. Same shit. Different day. But. Why is this a match? I, I don't understand why they even announced that tonight. No one's going to watch it. So. Come on, who really is going to watch it? But hey, they got to get ratings somehow. But, you know, Mandy Rose said, you know, I don't have any plans. Ziggler said, like, you don't have any plans or anything? And uh, Ziggler, you know, he tasted some of that cake and everything because she said, oh, just gave it to him. He pretty much took the cake and, you know, you know, they said that, you know, you can find roaches in these types of cakes. Ziggler pretty much, you know, smashed the cake with his foot. With a very nice pair of shoes he had on, some Jordans, which he did say. He said, it's okay, they're Jordans. I'm sure you can afford another six pairs or whatnot. They have some nice shoes, though, for real. But, hey, you can just always buy another. He's got money um, and whatnot. Corbin Freeman showed up and says, listen, I got, I need to talk with you immediately, like right now, okay? Uh, so they pretty much go off from there. Mustafa Ali was cutting a promo. Pretty much says he hasn't really had a good year according to plan. With pretty much clips from, you know... Back in February during the whole Elimination Chamber thing where Orton hurt his eye or what happened in Money in the Bank with Brock Lesnar or um, 
you know, the Intercontinental title thing was going after Nakamura, which, you, you know, I didn't think, know if he really had an Intercontinental title shot. Like they kind of dropped that, if you ask me. And he says he's got a lot of dark moments and everything. But he refuses to stand in the dark. He said he's going to continue, you know, to go into the light and shatter stereotypes. And, you know, pretty much said he's going to chase of uh, becoming a champion. Hopefully so. I like Mustafa Ali. Uh, even though I still think he cuts these Batman Bruce Wayne promos sometimes with street lights or whatnot. But I didn't think that was, that was actually a good promo. I thought they had him team with, um, you know, Shorty G or uh, Gable out there. Which I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, why don't they just name themselves Ali G? But it, it'd be like that Sasha Baron Cor uh, Cohen character where Ali G, look him up. Or, you know, Borat or whatnot. But, you know, I don't know a lot about the Ali G other day. Yep, check yourself for your wreck yourself, man. Or something like that. Check yourself for your wreck yourself. Or some something like that he does. Uh, I remember that being a clip back then. I have to look that up again. Ali G, folks. You're supposed to be a rapper. I, I kept calling him that team, but they, they, they probably would have got sued then. But, you know, hopefully they have something from Mustafa Ali. Something good comes from for him. Daniel Bryan. Finally, we got the main event. The original scheduled main event. Daniel Bryan, The Miz, and um, Corbin. This wasn't actually that bad of a match. But, you know, we, other than two commercial breaks, uh, of course, Ziggler came out. This was a triple threat match. Anything goes. One move I did like, though. It was one thing I did like through this match. I know some people don't like this move. was when uh, Miz had a figure four on Corbin and Daniel Bryan. He did a diving headbutt, which he looked like he kind of missed the whole thing. And don't get me wrong, I'm right here in the Chris Benoit comparisons right now. And um, he didn't even connect it. And then, I kind of like he put Corbin in the, the bell lock and then pretty much flipped him over. Flipping Miz over also, you know, countering the figure four as he put the lock in. I thought that was good. But, of course, Ziggler came in and started super kicking folks. Corbin pretty much came. Now, Corbin Reigns came in and he attacked Corbin, which Corbin was gone. So, I guess they protected Corbin by having him brawl with Reigns throughout the building. And, um, it... <clears throat> but, yeah, pretty much, you know... Oh, and then, you know, it basically became uh, Miz and Daniel Bryan. Come on, who who did you think was going to win this match, okay? This was Daniel Bryan by a no-brainer. I knew Corbin wasn't winning. I definitely know Miz wasn't going to win. And I did like how Bryan put in the LaBelle lock, dodging the figure four. Like, he was, like, twisting his arms and then going into the LaBelle lock, which, you know, Miz tapped out. And uh, they pretty much went to Bray Wyatt on the screen then. Pretty much saying that he's going to see him at the Rumble and whatnot. He's going to get the Fiend again. So, um, he says, you know, he remembers everything. Daniel Bryan did his yes chance, and that ended the show. So, yes, this was the final SmackDown of the year, I guess. So, the match was okay. I, I enjoyed the match. It was alright, but come on. Daniel Bryan was gonna win. I never saw Miz or... Nobody saw Miz or Corbin winning. Come on. We, we knew this. Maybe some people thought it would have been a triple threat, possibly, but... I don't. I kind of figured Daniel Bryan was gonna win this match right off the bat. So there you go. As for the rest of the show, most of this entire show was either a Corbin trying to trick people with Roman Reigns, which is almost like they kind of made Reigns and Corbin seem more important than the Universal Title itself because they that's for Reigns, folks, and Corbin just pushed this. I, I will say one thing. I said in my review, uh, the year in review. I don't know where they've done. I will say this dude Corbin has had so much TV time and this big of a push. It amazes me of the stuff they have given this guy throughout the entire year. Like they, it, it amazes me, and I said this all in my review too. But by God, they have pushed this guy to the max on here, okay? But um, you know, other than that, um, this was only the mostly good thing was the you know Daniel Bryan winning in their triple threat match. Even though we had to go through these start stop things to get to the match throughout the show, uh, the rest of the show itself, um, I don't really care about um, what. Um, Strowman dancing, I guess, but I guess he gets a shot at the Intercontinental title. It was a six man, it was okay. Uh, what what else that really happened? Carmel and Mandy Rose, I don't care, but at least I am interested in the Otis story that's going on right now. Um, Sasha and Bailey, and you know, the whole Lacey Evans thing. That was whatever. I don't give a crap about moment of piss out there. It sucks, anyways. I do enjoy Elias's promos. Wasn't savages this week, like, like the past couple weeks, but he's been a savage throughout the past few weeks with these promos, though, and I've enjoyed them. Like my friend told me, uh, something you would see at the Attitude Era. But other than that, that's my SmackDown review. There you go. It's not much to really go into, but uh, that's what I can really take from this uh, or whatnot. Like I said, this was the final SmackDown, uh, I guess, show of the year or whatnot. But other than that, comment, subscribe, um, you know... 
tell me what you think about the show, uh, check out other reviews, blah, 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 fuck Lifetime, etc., etc., um, what, what else, uh, check out, um, you know, like I said, check out the end of the year review that is posted online right now, like I said, it's an over a four and a half hour conversation, it's a great listen to, especially if you're not doing anything, I don't know, maybe if you're in the car, um, uh, working out or something, it's a, it's a good listen to that we go back and forth about wrestling and everything, so please check that out too, uh, what not, but, you know, other than that, uh, like I said, uh, it's not really, you know, you know, especially for wrestling next week. I think the biggest thing next week everybody's going to be talking about. I know it's going to be some good shows next week, too. I guess maybe things get back in the schedule and whatnot. The other thing I'm really looking forward to as into next week for wrestling is Wrestle Kingdom. And I will talk about how in, you know, maybe by the next review or two or something, how does these uh, Wrestle Kingdom reviews are going to go because it is a two-night thing. And how I will watch it, that's going to be different. I'm not going to really be staying out to two, up to 2.33 a.m. Uh, for that show on the first night. Second night, maybe. Uh, first night, I got shit to do the next day. I have to stay away from the internet. But I'm going to have to work on how that review is going to work out. Uh, how that's going to be reviewed and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, other than that, we will, I guess everything will be mostly back in a regular schedule. Um, you know, as in shows next week. Most of them, I believe, next week that's going on. But other than that, like I said, check out the end of the, end of the year review that's posted up online right now. Uh, like I said, if you check out the review, there are other links to my past reviews throughout the year. Because we talk on those also like Blood Money 4 or whatnot, and I do my Blood Money song. But, yeah, other than that, I'm out of here. I will see you guys later. Follow me on Twitter, at HoodedKnight890. Peace out.